When times are good, budgets are an opportunity to splash cash around in the form of tax cuts, which can, of course, endear governments to voters. Think Peter Costello and John Howard and the mining boom that saw them give away $170 billion in tax cuts while still managing to protect the surplus. Well, that was then and this is now. We haven't seen a surplus at the federal level in 10 years. The government is in debt, which even with today's forecast of a slight improvement, is still at around $583 billion. But even in times like these, savvy politicians can give handouts if they can convince us all that doing so will shore up the economy, which flows on to jobs and higher wages. That's how Malcolm Turnbull and Scott Morrison are selling their decision to drop the company tax rate from 30% to 25%. And Bill Shorten is standing in the way of ensuring that we can keep Australian businesses competitive. What Bill Shorten is doing, by voting against having our businesses more competitive, he is voting to send jobs and investment offshore. The theory behind the corporate tax cuts is simple. Give a business more money and it'll put more people on the payroll and give existing workers a pay rise. But if that were true in practice, how do we explain this? Banks are reporting bumper profits while also cutting their workforces. The NAB's earnings up 2.5% to $6.6 billion, but 6,000 jobs to be cut. So much for business passing on increased profits to their staff. Even if you take banks out of the equation, profit growth across corporate Australia has been strong. But that business bounty is not being passed on to workers. Take a look. The government seems to be ignoring this disconnect between profits and wages growth. Since the peak of the commodities boom in 2011-12, profit margins have risen to levels not seen since the early 2000s. But wages growth has continued to slow. As the Reserve Bank points out, we're experiencing the slowest wages growth since the 1960s. But while giving business a tax cut will improve their bottom line, there's no real evidence it leads to higher wages. Wages growth, or rather the lack of it, is a big concern in the US too. Donald Trump is cranky because companies in America are paying much more in tax than, say, Ireland, where the rate is just 12.5%. The president argues that lower taxes are luring American investment and jobs overseas. The White House says dropping the US corporate tax rate from 35 to 20% should fix everything. Here's Donald Trump's chief economist, Kevin Hassett. Yeah. You know, if we go down to 20 percent, then they're going to bring that activity back here, increase the demand for workers here and drive up wages as well. The White House claims lower corporate taxes will lift wages for the average worker by between four and nine thousand dollars a year. The problem is there's no credible evidence that that will be the case. In fact, the opposite has been true, clear from this graph. Between 2006 and 2013, while British businesses were paying less and less in tax, wages went down, not up. Over the past four years, they have started to grow, but at a much slower rate than in the United States, where corporate tax rates have remained high. Regardless of the facts, Malcolm Turnbull, like Donald Trump, is adamant Australia will suffer if company taxes aren't urgently reduced. If we don't reduce our corporate rate to 25% as planned uh, in our corporate and our enterprise tax plan over the coming decade, <coughs> the only advanced nations that will exceed Australia's tax rate are Japan and Malta. The Australian business community is throwing everything at their campaign to convince the parliament to pass $65 billion worth of company tax cuts over the next 10 years. If the Americans do half of what is they are proposing on company tax, it will suck billions of investment out of this country, along with future job creation and wages growth. So the Senate should pass the government's enterprise tax plan in its entirety or run the risk of allowing our economy to flounder. But the numbers just don't appear to support the argument. America's Congressional Budget Office, the equivalent of our Parliamentary Budget Office, recently produced this comparison of international corporate taxes. It shows what companies based in certain countries pay in tax after taking into account the effects of tax deductions and other concessions. 
In Australia, there are so many loopholes that few companies actually pay the full headline rate of 30%. In fact, the average actual rate paid is about 17%, which puts Australia's real corporate tax rate in the bottom third in the world, making us internationally quite competitive indeed. And in the irony of all ironies, the United States is currently the largest destination for Australian investment. Consider that. Australian businesses are choosing to invest in new offices, hire staff, buy equipment and set up in America, where company tax is one of the highest in the world. So much for businesses chasing lower taxes.